Hello, and welcome back to the channel, where I share tips and tricks on how to get the most out of your media. Are you looking for a torrent client for Unraid? Do you need VPN support for your torrents? Don't know where to start? Qubit Torrent VPN has you covered. Why Qubit Torrent VPN? It has PIA VPN, or Private Internet Access VPN, support built right in. It's solid and reliable, lightweight, has plug-in support, and it just works. So sit back and relax and I'll show you how to set up Qubit Torrent VPN on your Unraid Media Server. Let's get started. First thing we're gonna to need to do is to create a download folder. If you don't already have a download share on your server, let's get that set up first. To do that, go up to Shares, do Add Share. Under Share Name, we'll name this Download. And under Primary Storage, if you have a cache drive, I would select that. If not, just go ahead and leave it on Array. And if you do have a cache drive, under secondary storage, change that to array. Then under the mover action, we're going to make sure that it says cache to array. When the mover runs, it'll move the contents of the cache folder into the array itself. When you're done, hit add share. I already have one, so I'm just going to go back to shares. I go back into your download share, and if you scroll down at the bottom, we want to make sure that the export option is set to yes. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to browse to it from Windows. When that's selected, hit apply and then done. Now on your machine, open up File Explorer and browse to your server. For me, that is backslash backslash 10.0.0.11. Once there, you should see your downloads folder. If you haven't set this up before, go ahead and open that up, and then you want to create some subfolders in there. I've created completed, incomplete, and unzipped. Once those have been created, you can close that window. Next, let's get it installed. To do that, let's click over on apps, and in the search box, we're gonna type in Qubit Torrent VPN and press enter. I'm a fan of the bin hex containers and that's what I've been using for everything else, so I'm gonna stick with that. So go ahead and find the bin hex Qubit Torrent VPN and click install. And the first thing we need to check here is to make sure that the ports are available. Scroll all the way to the bottom, open up the show Docker allocations option, go back up, I do control F, for a search and then type in the port number you're looking for. In this case, for host port number one is 6881. And it shows that four have been found. If we scroll all the way down to the allocations, you'll see that is not listed there. So that one is free. Then 8080 is the next one. Let's look for that. And it says there's three. Let's look down here. And those are all within this container. So that one is good. And then 8118. Let's check that one out. 8118 says there's four. I bet that's in use by the Binhex Deluge VPN. Let's look down here, find out. And I am correct. So I'm gonna have to change that port number. If you have any conflicts in your system, just go ahead and change to a port that's available. I'm going to do 8119, and just to make sure that it's not used, I'm going to do another search, and that is the only, only one, so we're good. All right, host path two. This is gonna be the location of our downloads. So I will click into there and get rid of the beginning part. It's gonna be backslash MNT, backslash user, backslash downloads. Click off there to minimize that. And then for key one, we want that yes, we want the VPN enabled. All right, down to key two and key three. Key two is for your VPN user ID, and key three is for your VPN password. For the VPN username and password, I will be entering those off screen. Key four. This is the VPN client that you're going to be using. Inside of there, you've got PIA, AirVPN, ProtonVPN, or Custom. PIA is the default, which I'm going to stick with. If you're not familiar with PIA, it stands for Private Internet Access. If you're not a Private Internet Access customer, go ahead and use the link in the description to get started. There's an 83% discount, and you get four months free. In my opinion, it's the best VPN out there. I've been using it for years, never had one problem with it. So if you're not a customer yet, go ahead and sign up. It's well worth it. So I'm gonna be leaving that on PIA. And then for key five, we've got a couple options here, open VPN or WireGuard. I'm gonna be doing WireGuard. Key six, we don't need to worry about. Key seven, we want port forwarding. Key eight, we're gonna change that to yes, because we do want the Privoxy. And the web UI port looks fine. Key 11, this is gonna be your LAN network setting. So it's gonna be the first three digits of your LAN network. And if you look at your address for your Unraid server, the first three digits is going to be what you're needing. So you can copy that 
and paste it down below, or you can just type it in there. So it's going to be, in my case, 10.0.0, .0 .0, and then it's going to end with .0 slash 24. And the slash 24 is a CIDR notation, and it indicates that 255 addresses are available. Key 12 are the name servers. Those are all fine. We can scroll down. Everything else looks good. So I'll hit apply. All right, when it's done, scroll down, hit done. Let's head over to the Docker tab. In there, you'll now see the Binhex Qubit Torrent VPN container, and it should be up and running. The first thing we're going to do here is to go over to Auto Start and turn that on. And then if you've got Docker folder set up, you'll be familiar with this layout. I'm going to go ahead and add it to my folder. If you haven't seen my video on my top 11 Unraid system add-ons, which includes this Docker folder setup, I'll leave a link in the description so you can check that out. Next, we need to stop this container, so go ahead and go over to the icon for it, drop down, and select Stop. And once that's stopped, we need to browse to our app data folder. So I'll drag mine over here. To get to that, you're going to go backslash backslash your server IP address and then backslash app data, and press enter. If you get an error that it cannot be reached, then go to your share and adjust the export option. Let me show you how to do that real quick. We go to shares, app data, at the bottom, under export, yours is probably set to no. I set mine to yes hidden because it allows you to get to it, but yet it's not publicly displayed. Then you hit apply, and done. All right, back to our app data folder. In here, we want to go to the Deluge Qubit Torrent VPN. Open that. Then we're going to go into the WireGuard folder. Then we're going to edit the WG0 conf file. I like to use Notepad++, but you can use whatever text editor you'd like. And there you'll find that the last line will say endpoint dash nl dash Amsterdam dot private network. That is going to be the endpoint that the VPN connects to. Since I'm not remotely close to Amsterdam, I'm going to change this to something a little more local. So for me, I'm changing it to Toronto. CA dash Toronto. That all looks good. I will save it and exit. Now let's go start our container again. Go back to Docker. Qubit VPN start. All right, it's started. Let's click back on the icon and go to web UI. Looks like it's not quite up yet. Go ahead and reload. There we go. All right, the default username is admin. The default password is admin, admin. And if it doesn't work, which I expected it wouldn't, there's a bug that was introduced in the last update. So let me show you how to get around that. What we need to do is go back to our Unraid server. We need to stop the container. And there that it stopped. Let's go back to our file explorer. And we need to browse to our server, so backslash, backslash, your server IP address, backslash, backslash, for me it's 10.0.0.11, backslash, app data. I'm going to go into the binhex qubit torrent VPN folder, and then qubit torrent, and config. We need to edit the qubit torrent.conf file going to use notepad plus plus again go all the way down to the bottom of that file and we are going to add in we're going to add in that line i'll leave that in the top of the description so you can just copy and paste it make it easier on yourself once you've got that in there save it and then you can exit then we're going to restart the container start give it a moment for it to load back up i'm going to refresh and let's try that again There you go. Had to hit refresh a few times, but it came up. So admin for the username. Password should be admin. Admin, all one. Click login. There you go. Now let's change that password so it'll make it a little more secure. So to do that, go up to Tools, then Options, then over to Web UI, and then under Authentication, the username is listed there, and the password you can change here. So I'm going to change the username to demo, and the password, make it my super secret password. Scroll down and hit save. Now we're going to go up to file, and then log out. Now let's log back in with our new credentials. All 
All right, let's go ahead and configure it now. Let's go back to Tools, then Options. For Behavior, all the defaults are fine for me. Downloads. I'm going to tell it to delete the .torrent files after it's done. Enable that. And then pre-allocate the disk space. If you're using a ZFS file system, then you don't want to have that option turned on. And then for the default torrent management mode, we want to set that to automatic. The next three options, you want those to be on relocate torrent or relocate affected torrent. The default save path is going to be where the files end up. So that would be our downloads folder and then completed. So if you named your something different, it's going to be whatever you have within your downloads folder. Whether it's complete, completed, finished, whatever you named it there. Um, I've got completed and then incomplete will be the other one. So this is going to be for me, forward slash data, forward slash completed. Then we're going to enable keep incomplete torrents in. We're going to set that to forward slash data, forward slash incomplete. And the rest should be fine there. So go down, hit save. We'll go back into there. You don't have to hit save every time. I just like to, so I don't lose anything. Now we're going to go over to speed. And the zeros here indicate that it's unlimited. So the upload and download rates are unlimited, and that's fine for me. The alternative rate limits. If you've got a metered connection in the day, but you've got unlimited at night, it's good to turn this on. You can have a very slow speed or none at all in the daytime. And then you can set the schedule to allow it to go to whatever you want it to. I don't need that feature, so I'm just going to leave that disabled. Next, I'll head over to BitTorrent. I'm going to enable torrent queuing. And these you can set whatever your maximum active downloads or your active uploads to be. The defaults are fine. I'm not going to worry about that. If you have got a fast internet connection and lots of bandwidth available, then you can go ahead and up those. I'll leave those on defaults for now. I'm going to enable do not count slow torrents in these limits. If you've got a slow connection and it's not really doing anything, it's just kind of sitting there or going really slow downloading, then Qubit Torrent will basically ignore that as an active download. It'll keep it going, but it'll add another one to the queue up here. I'm going to change mine to 10 and 10. So if the download rate is less than 10 kilobits a second and the upload rate is less than 10 kilobits, then it'll just consider it not active. Then I'm going to jump over to WebUI. I'm going to scroll down here and under security, I'm going to disable enable carjack carjack clickjacking protection and scroll down and hit save there you go qubit torrent should be all set up let's test it out i'm going to do a quick search for a linux mint iso this one looks good i want to copy the link address go back to qubit torrent we'll click the add torrent link option right there paste it in and hit download there you go it's downloading 2.2 3.3 now that's downloading, let's go back to our folders and see what it's doing. All right, so we're under downloads. If we go into completed, it should be empty, and it is. If we go under incomplete, it should be listed there. And it is. So the folder options are moving the files accordingly. And we'll give it a moment. So when it finishes, we'll see if it moves to completed. While that's processing, let's talk about the interface a little bit. So as you know, this option here is to add a torrent link, the one next to it is to add a new torrent file to create one. This is the trash can, which allows you to delete it, but I'm not going to do that right now. The little playhead indicates a, a resume option. The pause pauses it, so it pauses the download. This next icon here moves it to the top of the queue. This moves it up one. This moves it down one. That moves it to the very bottom. And this gear icon is the options which we've already been in. On the left, under status, you'll find a list for all, for downloading, for seating, completed, resumed, so on and so forth. Gives you a quick way to sort it out and see what's what. In the bottom half, you've got the general tab, which shows you general information about the torrent file, the transfer time, information on the file. Tracker tab will show you the different trackers that are working on it. The peers, all the peers that are connected to, and then the sources, and then the content. If you know anything about torrenting, you know what all that stuff is. It's kind of redundant that I'm explaining it. It's almost done. There we go, it's complete. Let's go back to our download folder and see what happened. Go into incomplete and it is gone. However, I noticed that it created its own folder for complete because I mistakenly named it that. The completed folder where I wanted it to go remains empty. So if we open complete, it is there. Let's go fix that. 
If you go back to options, you can either go to tools and options or click on the little cog wheel and under downloads, the default save path here, that was supposed to be completed. So I'll fix that, scroll down, hit save. And because we have that option turned on to move the torrent files around, it should have moved it to the proper folder now. And it has. So that one is empty and now it's in the one that I wanted it to go into. Let's go to the complete folder and we're good. Since I don't need this file, let's see if it deletes it. We'll click onto it and hit the delete. Also permanently delete these files. I'm going to enable that and then hit remove. It removes it from the Qubit Torrent client. Now let's go check the folder. If we go under completed, it's gone. So it's definitely doing its job. There you go. Qubit Torrent set up and working. VPN service is enabled. So now you can torrent with some peace of mind that your VPN service is behind it. What VPN service do you use? Let me know in the comments. I feel private internet access VPN is the best one out there. Combine it with Qubit Torrent and you have a reliable torrent client and a secure VPN service. You can't go wrong. I'll see you in the next one.